Well, good morning, everybody. It's Bobby at Bobby's Hobbies. It's 6, 10 a.m. We're putting on that little light. We're going to put some sausages on. We're going to make some pancakes. What are we using for pancake batter? We're using crusties. I love it when it comes in this big, giant uh, plastic bag. It stays very fresh. We're going to put some water right from the tap. And that's it. Now this is everything mixed in. I used to put in milk and um, eggs. And I can make it from scratch. But it's hard to beat the fluffiness. This has got just the right amount of... I, I guess it's um, baking powder. Maybe baking soda. I didn't put enough water. So... But this makes the fluffiest pancakes without any, like, you know, like serious effort, which is kind of ridiculous. I'm going to have to put the old cloth trick. You put a cloth on here, and that creates friction. So you can mix things without the bowl. Now... You'd almost be making biscuits with this if it's th that's still too thick. Now you can still add milk. You can still add a lot of things. But, um, you know. This is so easy. It's just so easy. It's kind of... So we're here making breakfast. We got this on super low heat. Because we made our batter. But we decided that we're going to spice things up today. Got our coffee brewing in our little tiny pot over here. Makes a lot of noise for a little pot. It was like a nice day outside. Ouch, this plant's got spikes. But we're going to make this lemon blueberry pepperidge farm swirl. And turn it into French toast. <clears throat> so we've got our milk. Gonna get one egg, gonna crack it on a really solid surface. You need one egg in there for that. And um, toss this out. Anything else going out there? No deer there this morning. I gotta get to the supermarket and get some carrots. So we've got that in there, which is great. But of course, I forgot. We should get the pumpkin spice. Ta-da! All right. Got the pumpkin spice, which is, of course, a mixture of cinnamon, ground up, nutmeg, ginger, allspice, and cloves. As we are coming toward that favorite time of year, autumn. It's pretty good. Got our, one of our Halloween mugs with the bats. And it's got, of course, a signature bat on it. Oh, we got to whip this up. It's a nice mixture. welcome in the autumn and um, considering we're going to welcome in the autumn I think we should get a full pot of coffee which we got here crank up this cup a little bit oh now we're tanked up that's good but I think this should be special so we brought out the Crown Royale, which I don't know why I'm thinking this was, was in Pulp Fiction, but it probably wasn't. Crown Royale. Oh, it was some kind of, uh, I'm trying to remember what Jackson said in there, something like Royale, something, it was him or, or Travolta, so use that word for something else maybe. Wow, now oh, that's going to juice it up. 
have to go back and reacquaint myself with that cinematic gem from Quentin Tarantino. <clears throat> you know, I don't know why the Quentin Tarantino movies have violence in them, but somehow it's done in a way, in a, in a genius way, that it doesn't, how can I say it, like the, compared to say Scorsese's movies, which have violence in them, those seem so real and terrifying, but yet the, the, the Tarantino movies have the violence in it in a way that you know is there just to entertain and it takes, it is not as fearful, it's more like a comic book, and I don't mean it in a bad way, I mean it's a good way, you could actually enjoy the movie without getting terrified, but the, the characters that you have in the um, Scorsese movies are, you know, really dark. Anyway, that's just my simple take on it. Would love any commentary. I have no idea why I brought that up. <laughs> now, of course, it would help if I had a spatula, since without a spatula, it's not easy. Of course, there's no spatula in here. Maybe the dog took the spatula. That's a metal spatula. Don't want that. Oh, this one's good. All right. Now I have the spatula, so I can I can do things with it. All right, let me get that in there, and I'll be right back. All right, time to pour pancake. First, get the butter. Put that on here. Transfer that angular momentum by doing a little upsy with the knees so that I prevented the spillage from the bottom of the, uh, the ladle. Got our heat at medium. Small. Now, this is probably a better larger burner, but it's okay. All right, now, as you can see, that's really soaked, so that's got to go next. We'll see how this goes towards flipping. This pan kind of heats more evenly <clears throat> than the iron pans uh, and has a somewhat of a shielding effect, so I get more of a light brown to medium brown pancake as opposed to uh, if I use, uh, you know, these these metal ones down here, you get more of an 18th century style look to it. <clears throat> but this makes it easier to be a good pancake cook. And sometimes easier is better. Not always. Now it's getting to the point where it looks dry. A lot of bubbles coming up. This part looks a little bit too wet. I think that would collapse if I were to um, try to flip it now. Once I see this a little drier, this has got the bubbling, so I'm thinking that's going to hold up to the flip. Bubbles are starting to appear now on this side. I could probably risk it. little bit premature but not bad not a bad flip all right okay, we got our one pancake out now we're gonna try to make a French toast slice this is gonna be messy in there. And absorb a little bit. It looks good. Try to let it soak up some of this milk with Crown Royale, Canadian whiskey, pumpkin spice, and egg. 
a wash. I'll let that try to soak up the rest. Put this in. Nice. That was a little early. All right. Let's see if we're getting this to soak up some of these delicious juices. Juice is really the wrong word. Juice would either be coming from a fruit or a gravy this is just the liquid probably make another slice oh, there'll be leftovers that's all that's what I got this for to make french toast Got a cinnamon squirrel in it and blueberries, not raisins. It's amazing, like blueberries make great pie. Raisins sometimes find their way in pies, like in a French apple pie has raisins in it. But you don't see like raisins as a raisin pie or a, um, a grape pie, but you have grape drink. And lately you can find blueberry drinks, but usually it's not. Usually in a drink form, it's, it's grape that you're finding of the blue-purple berries. So, I want to make sure this soaks this up. Remember, this has got the good stuff in it. It's got the crown royale. this in here. Beautiful. We've got our four slices of French toast. Now, if you think I'm going to go to work drunk because it's got Crown Royale in it, you're sorely mistaken. That heat will certainly cook that off. Lower this temperature a little bit. That should be done. Get a separate dish for this stuff. Yum. All right, let's look and see if our French toast is done. Now, this, you can see the juice in there is still a little moist. So this is not, this is not fully cooked. You don't want to be totally dry either. You don't want it to be runny. I think this one is okay. Nope, not really. Let's leave it there a few seconds longer. Let's taste our bad coffee. Good. Oh, these are not 
grounding up. We'll be back. Well, we made our French toast, made some pancakes. One of them got eaten up partially by a hungry daughter. I had to make a blueberry pancake for her, which I did not capture on video. Just added some blueberries. It's already gone. And these are smaller pancakes, but of good size. Not like that asteroid size one before. These are more like meteorites, which my designation smallest is silver dollar, and meteorite pancakes than asteroids. And then if I make a full-size pan one or like a, a crepe, and it's no small moon, it's a battle station. So we'll see. Yum. Dinah tastes that French toast with the, um, oh, I put it away already, the Crown Royale French Canadian whiskey. That's for me. Oh, hello there, Mimi Bear. She's waiting for an eggy. She would be like Gollum's friend, Eggsy. Yum. All right. Well, it's time for World War II eggs. No, today we're going to do World War I, Big Bertha shelling Paris. Right on the Tower Eiffel. Take that for making fun of the Last Supper. Oh, take that. Losing to the American team in the finals of basketball. How dare you challenge us in basketball? You know, actually... This country, the United States of America, owes an incredible grit of gratitude to the country of France. Without France's help in the Revolutionary War, we would not have defeated Great Britain. We would not be the United States of America today. But nobody remembers that, and that's a shame. France bankrupted itself to save us. So we should really and truly have great admiration and love for the French people. But unfortunately, people here don't remember anything. Now, of course, General Patton said that we uh, fulfilled our obligations to France. Not that he actually came out and said it, but he did when he arrived in France said, Lafayette, we are here. Lafayette was the French uh, colonel general who uh, helped get the King Louis to pack the revolutionary forces. And we repaid them by saving them from the Germans. Very interesting. Anyway, bon appetit, and uh, remember that uh, history is complicated, and uh, there's a lot of good in, in many peoples. Sometimes, though, they go through periods where they're not as good, um, and that goes all over the world. All right, and I'm not talking about the French. The French haven't really caused any harm, in, I guess, since Napoleon, and he was trying to improve things. So there you go. All right, over and out.